It's time for Side Scrollers with me, Stuttering Craig. You decide what you lose, not other people. And blabs. I like pickles. And co-hosted by our friends from around the internet. If you like common sense, hit that thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rumble.com and Side Scrollers.local.com. What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday to you. I'm stuttering, Craig. Welcome to the number one video game. It's Side Scrollers. <laughs> oh, man. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. There are days where it's, it's hard to find things to talk about. I talked about this yesterday where it's like, hey, there are days, like, it, it seems like there's always something to talk about. Today was not one of those days. Until the Lord just dropped our lead into our lap. Thank you, Gamer God. Hello, Blabs. How are you? Hello. Yeah, seriously, I was trying to find stuff for, like, the greater part of this morning. And within, like, the last hour, it's like, ta-da. I was like, thank you. Thank you, who's ever listening to me. Praise <laughs> video game jesus <laughs> i was like oh no i can't find anything <laughs> speaking of video game jesus it's melody mac hi <laughs> how are you <laughs> i am doing great good to be here as always glad you're here it's tuesday which means it's melanie day which is great and also joining us today for the first time i am excited to welcome endemia to the chat or to the to the show how are you buddy I'm good. I just released a video and I'm just uh, happy to be here. <laughs> what does that look like for you when you release a video? Does it, do you like scope on it for the first hour answering all the comments and everything? Is it like, uh, what, I try to answer the talk? comments and I think everyone here can under, can know, know exactly what I'm doing when you just sit there and you just kind of like pull down on your screen to yes. see the, the views, you know, refresh <laughs> and stuff. So I'm doing that. Um, it's doing okay. I would say right now. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, it's going well, just a little tired from, you know, I doing all these podcasts and everything, but it's been great. Like awesome. And like getting to connect with everybody like yesterday with, uh, you know, Valley Renegade and with you guys now and everything. It's, it's awesome. They're making so the around, me. man. Glad you're here. Yeah. Glad you're with us, buddy. Um, we're going to be talking about one of your, uh, the, the subject of your video today, but give everybody kind of, kind of a quick TLDR, uh, about, about your, uh, your video and, and you know, where they can find it and all that fun stuff. So it's on Endemia on TV, obviously on YouTube. Uh, the video starts, it's about Cornerstone Interactive Studio CEO, basically claiming that uh, gaming executives, so like they, they don't say exactly which company, but it's they're basically making it a broad saying, like all gaming execs, so you can say Blizzard, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, whatever. And they're saying that, that essentially the gaming industry has been surrendered to sexist and racist, as they say. And what they mean by that is you and me and everyone watching, like you guys are the toxic players you guys are the horrible ones we need to get rid of you and they're trying to essentially use these modified surveys to make it seem like um to make it seem like basically that they need to find a new audience that agrees with their ideologies but we know that doesn't exist because the modern audience and chasing that is not a real thing unless they can somehow open a portal to like in the multiverse and find a <laughs> an entire universe of like sjw's with like blue hair that'll oh. buy their games that's not going to happen. So they, they're stuck with us. So we no. are, we have, we have opened that portal. That portal opened a couple of years ago and uh, that portal exists and it starts and stops at San Francisco, <laughs> San Francisco and Los Angeles and the, and the uh, East and West coast. Although I, I will say this, you do a phenomenal job of, uh, of showing boobs in your thumbnails and that's a big winner. Okay. Big I want to, can I, can I explain that for a second? So no, I have a lot of people in my comments that always say like, Oh, why do you always put like lewd stuff in your things? It's because when I was a kid, my dad used to bring home comic books all the time because he used to work at that the uh, Toronto International Airport. He was a manager. So a lot of the trucks would come in, whatever, and they bring like boxes, stuff they wouldn't need, and they'd leave it behind. So every Friday, my dad would come home with like a big box of comic books. And I was like five years old. I'm reading comics that I've no business reading, you know, Spawn, Spider-Man, 
Batman, Punisher, where he's shooting everyone in the face. And all the covers, because I was born in the 90s, all the covers always had either really big, muscly men that are like just insanely badass, or they had really beautiful women that were just like bodacious and stuff, right? Because I grew up in the 90s. So I grew up on like mm -hmm. X-Men animated series. I, I grew up on shows back in the day, like, like uh, you know, biker mice is from Mars and all that I kind of stuff. I loved that. Yeah. Yeah. Street sharks and, and gargoyles and all that stuff. So, you know, Beast Wars until they change it to Beasties because Beast Wars is problematic, I guess. And um, <laughs> so my covers are just basically an homage to the 90s where it's like when you looked at a comic book cover, it was like big, bodacious, sexy babe. And if there is a guy on it, he's like ripped out of his mind, muscles, you know, just so that's just what I do. So if people don't like boobs, I'm not stopping. I don't I don't care. I like it. So whatever. Hey, you speak to the heart of men and a lot of women, because here at the end of the day, here's the thing. There's this, there's been this growing push over the last decade or so that all of a sudden men just stopped liking boobs. Like what? Are you kidding me? Yes, men like boobs. People like boobs. Everybody likes boobs. Everybody. I just like your take on boobies. That's when right. You think, yeah, because when you when you think about it, like if you if you really want to cater to both men and women, you will actually give them attractive women and and technically attractive men too. Because yeah, right. Like think of like Reacher on Amazon. Like men want to watch that because. He's a badass dude, but women want to watch it too because he's, he's nice to look at. And it's the same thing with like James Bond or anything. It's once you remove, I would say the natural um, gender, what science, I guess you could say, if you, you know what I mean? Like we all like looking at people that are idealized and strong. That's what superheroes and stuff are. So when they make things ugly on purpose, you, you cater to nobody. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of, uh, People we like to look at. Have you seen Jake Gyllenhaal? And <laughs> look at this guy. Look at that guy right there. I'll tell you what. Put him in your thumbnails. <laughs> He's up for. Uh, apparently, he wants to play Batman. I don't know if it'll happen. Yeah, I, that's true. I think he'd do good. Well, then he good. he didn't get it the first time around. Back in the early two thousands, he auditioned for it. If I'm not mistaken, and he didn't get it. So He's like, listen, I'm trying again this time. <laughs> Alden Richardson wants to be Batman too. That'd be like. That dude has the like the, the physicality to be Batman, like 100. percent We need a That'd Jake awesome. Face emo, Greg. I'm just saying. We, we, we just need a, a, a six pack of abs. That's it. Just it. it just, that's Listen, an everybody emote. wishes they had a six pack abs, but the reality <laughs> is you can get a Jake Face emo there in like two seconds. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. Well, look, I want to remind everybody we are live over at Rumble.com/slash Side Scrollers. Join us over there. There were six thousand wonderful, uh, freedom loving, common sense mother suckers over there. 6,430 of y'all who have hit the follow button over there. Thank you guys very much. Genuinely appreciate that as we grow a little bit more over on uh, Rumble. Appreciate that. Uh, we also have an X account where you could have found out that uh, Indy and Melanie were going to be on the show today. If you just follow us over at Side Scroller Pod Indy, get clips and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, little, little, uh, just little, just little uh, bits of of knowledge that Blabs finds, which we're going to get into that. <laughs> Wonderful Blabs. We also have an Instagram account, don't we, Blabs? We do, so follow us for some memes and clips of the show. Otherwise, violence, full-on wedgies, um, oh. eye-punching, whatever. I don't know. Cat scratching. <laughs> eye-punching. Wow. Punching. <laughs> Greg said forks in the eyes, and that was too much for me, so I'd rather just punch the okay, eyes. Less okay. damage. I, yeah, that is better. Like a little, it's not extreme violence, just a little violence. <laughs> you know, like the Tart always says that I like violence, so here's a little bit. Well, Blab, <laughs> you should start with emotional damage next time. Emotional Tomorrow. damage. Yes, uh, just start start emotionally shaming everybody till they do it, and then right. we'll uh, then we'll have some. You're a bunch of losers yeah. until you follow us on Instagram. Is that better? <laughs> Jesus, there we you go. You helped me to emotionally damage them. That's one way to there do it. There it is. <laughs> You're a bunch of losers. <laughs> Blabs. But you Ridiculous. told me to, so that was the best thing I could think of. We also have a Kick account where you can follow us over there uh, at kick.com slash side scrollers. If you don't like where you're watching right now and you're just looking for another outlet, you can do it there. It's great. Um, but the place I would love for you guys to find is over on over on uh, Locals, where you can find us at sidescrollers.locals.com. If you want to open up a new window, open that up over there. You make an account, you're going to get notified every single day, which you probably won't over on YouTube because, you know, YouTube is YouTube. But you, you get notified every day. And coming up in about uh, three weeks from now on the 17th, I'm sorry, two weeks from now on the 17th of April, I'll begin 
I'll be doing something I've never done before exclusively on locals. And that is watching the theatrical cut of Lord of the Rings. Number one, uh, and Damian, have you seen Lord of the Rings? Of course I have. <laughs> I bet you Craig doesn't even know what the Although was. when I first saw the first one, I remember I was a little kid. I had scarlet fever for some reason. I don't know why I just had it. So I remember there was like a scene in, in like in the first movie where they're fighting orcs. And as a kid, I saw the orcs and it like freaked me out or something. And then I, I like felt sick and I couldn't watch it. But then I came back the next day wow. and then I finished it. And then I watched all of them. And I've seen them all in theaters. I, I love those movies, man. I played the games 100% Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War. Like it just... I, I love Lord of the Rings. They don't they don't do enough with it. They just well, I'm going to do something with it. Coming up in uh, in two weeks, once again, over on exclusively to locals at sidescrollers.locals.com. Become a member over there. That is where we're going to do it. If you want it, it's free to become a member. If you want to support over there, you can. And it's obviously greatly appreciated, but you don't need to. It's free. So hop on over there. It'll be exclusive to locals, which is great. Also, if you like watching things over here on YouTube, you can find clips and all sorts of stuff in addition to the show. Join the 74,243 wonderful subscribers over here on the channel as we grow a little bit more every single day, closing in on 75 thousand subscribers which is outstanding let's do our best to hit 700 likes today as we as we're uh, bumping those rookie numbers up uh and of course let's get our 25 membership goal for the day um and we are off to a rip roaring start as eric came in as a brand new member to the show uh thank you eric greatly appreciate your monthly support that is spectacular that puts us at one for the day let's get going as uh Godzilla's Greaser came in and says, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy. Oh, you, you saw Godzilla uh, uh, cross Kong or whatever? You didn't uh, like it? Yeah, I didn't. I thought it was the worst Godzilla of all time. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it, oh, my goodness. That new veterinarian character and the podcaster together were just the most insufferable. It, it felt disrespectful to Godzilla to me. I, I couldn't do it, but I would have walked out if it wasn't for Kong scenes actually being pretty good. I just oh, wow. wish the whole movie was Kong in, in Hollow Earth, no people in dialogue. It would have been incredible if that was the case, but yeah, <laughs> it was pretty insufferable otherwise. You've got both ends of the spectrum. You have the really good with minus one, and then you have the X, you know, X Kong or whatever it is that right. uh, kind of on both both sides of it, man. That's rough for sure. And people, obviously, with this, I didn't expect it to be on par with minus one. I expected it to be more along the lines of Godzilla versus Kong, uh, the last one that Legendary did, but it just it wasn't. And I don't know. I feel like is something wrong with me because it seems like an unpopular opinion. But me and my entire family agreed on it. We thought it was terrible. And then we're seeing people say, oh, it was so good. It was better than the last one. And it's like, is something wrong with me? Because I, oh, did we watch the same movie? I thought it was terrible. I haven't seen it yet. I've only well, seen clips online. I saw one clip of like one monkey using a smaller monkey as, as like nunchucks to hit fun. a bunch of other monkeys. I loved that. Yeah, Kong scenes were the only <laughs> good no part. Idea. That was good. But also, I feel like Godzilla's atomic breath, he kept spamming it constantly. And the thing about his atomic breath is that is supposed to happen at like, it's supposed to blow your mind when that happens. But it's just like, oh, here he's using it again. Oh, he's using it again. All, all right, there it goes again. It just loses its power and... I felt like Godzilla was very underwhelming in this movie. She's spamming it like the noob tubes in Call of Duty. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry you had to deal with that, Melanie. That's, that's it's, it, I still had a fun day, so it, it was, it's fine. <laughs> hey, Melatonin Gamers came in and so says, stay awake or I'll report you for lack of caffeination. Hey, thank you very much, Melatonin Gamers. That's not Melanin Gamers, which we're going to get That's what I thought it said. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? Never mind. We're good. Uh, Relentless came in as a member for three months. Let's think about doing a series examining setting norms and why Gov doing that usually turns out weird. Uh, I think that sounds like a good idea. You should absolutely do it. Do it. Go get it. I love it. Pushup says, Mel, how hyped are you for Barkang Monastery? Monastery. I'm stoked. That's my favorite Tomb Raider level. So when I hop back in on stream, that's, that's what I'm playing. My favorite Tomb Raider level. <laughs> All right. Rebound says... No curves quite like 90s comic character curves. Let's go. That's right. And uh, now that would be deemed as problematic because, you I know, don't care. shapes. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. 
Tomok says, so Daddy Craig, would video game Jesus be called RN Jesus? We've all, listen, we've all met RN Jesus at one point in time, and he's been good to us and bad to us at certain points. If you ever played Mario Kart, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tomok. Appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Eric says, extreme, extreme, extreme dinosaurs. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I was playing Jurassic World last night, speaking of dinosaurs, and I still cannot get my five stars. It is absolutely devastating. I've been playing this game for months. Like I've been on the grind for this one challenge for months, and I cannot get my five stars. What game is I've it? Even, Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm on like a super hard mode, like the hardest mode possible. And I've been grinding. I watched a YouTube video last night and it was just filled with comments saying, yeah, I think it's unbeatable, this level. I'm like, what the fuck? I've been spending months grinding. So now I'm just really depressed. From one masochist to another, you got to keep going. It's so been 161 <laughs> so hours climbing in Final it. Fantasy Rebirth. I'm you so got to do it. <laughs> wow. Craig, listen, I'll, I'll make you happy now. Mo just sent a five dollar tip on locals saying, "Shout out to Craig for beating DK two yesterday, and yet still finding a way to be a disappointment to Donkey Kong Senior on par branding." LOL. What? I, I did. I did. I finally beat Donkey Kong Country two. First time playing it, uh, playing through all the way, uh, and it was quite the adventure. I, I really enjoyed it. I would say it's like a nine point five out of ten. Whereas, like the original Donkey Kong Country is like a ten out of ten, like nine point seven out of ten. First one, so much, dude. It's so good. That's oh, so great. It was good. It's such a uh, it it has such a different. I, Dixie Kong has such a different feel. The way, like her movement in the game, it's it's. I don't know. It's great. It really is great. I'm I'm anxious to play the third, but I still need to hundred percent everything over on DKC two before we can move on. So there's something about those Super Nintendo games, just the way they played, like back in the day, so good. Like Super Mario World's amazing. Mega Man X. I remember having Super Street Fighter, I was in Super Street Fighter Turbo 2, I think it was called. All of games them, games yeah. like that. Chrono Trigger. Oh, mm -hmm. it was the golden age, man. The, console, man. the golden age, for it. sure. Miku says, flat is justice. No more flat <laughs> slander, you can even. <laughs> okay, <Miku. laughs> That's the thing anime does well, is because like, uh, and, and people aren't opposed to different body types for women. We just don't want to see ugly characters. So not every female character has to be super curvy. Anime does a great job at, at giving different body types for their characters, but they look beautiful. <laughs> they don't have to make them ugly. That's right. Just, yeah. just don't make them ugly. That's it. Just yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> we know we... we Sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 I'll just read that off. Go ahead. Well, it's like we 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 know why they make characters ugly on purpose. And I think honestly, it's more of a failure than anything because there was this whole article. I remember back about a month ago, I talked about it. It was from Naughty Dog and how yep. an ex Naughty Dog uh, artist was talking about how mm -hmm. the reason why they make characters uglier on purpose is to appease the trans crowd. And then exactly. my opinion on that was wouldn't it be better? to if like if you are going to a piece of the trans crowd or is wouldn't it be better to make idealized characters for both male characters female characters and then trans characters too well instead of bringing them all down transgender you know I mean? people want to i mean they're they think that they're the other gender so in their head wouldn't they want to play as the gender they wish they were i don't even feel like you have to I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. <laughs> it seems like such a slap in the face, right? The idea that yeah. you, would, you would make a character uglier to appease trans the ugly people. people is like, what like the saying. idea that you're going like, listen, <laughs> like you have your self worth is so low. We're going to make these people uglier to make them feel make you feel better, right? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's just it makes more sense to make them like if if you really have to at least make all the characters idealized for like I guess the three genders, whatever the hell you want to call it. Because then that way everyone gets, you know, catered to in a way that makes sense. But if you're making it's like we're gonna make the we're gonna make the women uglier to appease the trans people, then you just failed the you just failed the 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 women and the trans people. We better to give the women the good character and the trans people a good character, and that way everyone's happy, but they can't seem to do that. So we are where we are right now. Just give them boobs. That's it. Extra zero came in with the 499 says, Great guest today. Really enjoyed a conversation with hey. him on, on the mean stream. Um been waiting for him to get on here. Big ups for Beast Wars. Thanks, Extra Zero. Appreciate you. Extra Zero. He's, he's, he's always in my comments, so I say hi to him. Extra Zero is great. Joseph says, a vote for Blabs is a vote for boobs, but is a vote for boobs a vote for Blabs? <laughs> I mean, I have boobs, so it's the same thing. 
this is all naturally wonderful, good questions. Hey, look at <laughs> North Scout came in with a fifty dollar super chat. Andy, you get you get to uh, pick the color that goes on the wall today, man. You want blue, red, orange, yellow, green, or purple? What would you My like? My favorite color is red, so I got to go with red. Red it is. Sounds good. Let's get it going. Hey, North Scout, thank you very much. Genuinely appreciate that. And while I get you up on the wall, Blabs, go ahead and read off St. G's right there, please. All right. St. G's is taking a quote from Left for Dead 2. If nature allowed it, Craig would be would bear back Jake Gyllenhaal's baby. What's that? I would not bear back Jake Gyllenhaal anything. Uh, I just really appreciate his uh, his god bod. That's all. You'd use side saddle or something. It's fine. What are you talking about? Just ridiculous. Hey, North Scout, look at that. That's great. Look at that. One time at band camp says, who would win, Godzilla or Cthulhu? Cthulhu. Ooh, oh, I love Godzilla, though. I like you Cthulhu a lot, too. Cthulhu's got... an inter interdimensional space god. I, I still have like... to root for Godzilla. <laughs> And I think, like, size-wise, Cthulhu's probably, like, two or three times the size of Godzilla, too. Not saying size matters 100%, but I'm just saying. Like, Cthulhu's a space god. I don't know if Godzilla can handle that. And he's spoken like a true okay. man. Size doesn't matter, guys, all right? <laughs> spoken like a true That's man. What I tell right myself there. every day in the mirror. That's right. <laughs> hey. Oh, there you go. Thanks. There Thanks, there. Appreciate that. <laughs> Super Sentai guy says, uh, you should have seen Ghostbusters instead. I though. did, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything sucks right now. It all sucks. <laughs> Maybe says, Labs, the best way to play Jurassic World is to create, is, uh, create all the dinosaurs, get as many people there as possible, and then release all the carnivores. Then I would go bankrupt and lose the challenge. Oh. You're playing it yeah. like you're playing it like you're trying to play blabs. You got to just cause. I'm, I mean, I do that afterwards after I finish the challenge. I'm like, all right, be free, T Rexes, and just eat. you can actually see people get eaten or like run over, and it's so cool. Embrace it. Embrace <laughs> I love people. it. Violence. <laughs> you know what I notice? So oh, I'll talk after. Go ahead. But just oh, go ahead, say, like, you, I noticed one thing about about when women in video games is not. It's actually like a funny thing. They love to Probably kill kind of thing. things in video we games. We do. They, and it's something about it. I don't know what it is, but like every woman I know that's played video games, if they're given the option of good or evil, unanimously, yeah, they go we play evil. evil. Yeah. Uh -huh. Have I you not do. seen me play Roller Coaster what. Tycoon? I never pick, if you, yeah, I never play good, ever. It's like, hey. you have to do that in real life. That's boring. Listen, let's, let's have fun in a video game. <laughs> video games are about escapism, right? And yeah. at the end of the day, if you can't go off and murder 20 people, right, uh, after stealing a car and then what banging a hooker, you do it in Grand Theft Auto, you know, like that's just how it works. It's okay. Not yeah. that you ever do that in real life, but the idea that it's escapism, you know. So. And the uh, the old school uh, Gears of War games were really popular among women, which was a surprise because all these game developers, I feel like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to add more women to the game or you got to add pink or this to make women like it. But women liked Gears of War a lot. So I was one yeah, of them. I my name, I cat Coltrane. Well, there you go. <laughs> Gears of War, the ones that did the worst are the newest ones, and those are the ones yep. that are like Sweet Baby Inc. involved, right? Like, there you yep. go. Tells you everything you need to know. Like I said, I you want to get women to watch and play your stuff, you give them good-looking, idealized men and women, and boom, there you go. You got everything. Yeah. <laughs> boom. Cody, sorry, am I going to play Skyrim? No, I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to watch Lord of the Rings first before I do anything like that. That's 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 my first goal. He's not Dragonborn. Uh, no. Oh, it's Logan. Rune, RuneScape Herald says, uh, call me Logan. Uh, I have made a clan in Destiny 2 called Gamer Gamer Rising 2 or GG2 to establish a foothold in games that need to be stood up to. Love Melanie and Ademian. Uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, Thank RuneScape. Thank you. I, I used to that, play Logan. so much RuneScape, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still have uh, my character, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Eric came in and says, I still play SNES games, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Breath of, Breath of Fire 1 and 2, and, un and then Uncharted Waters, New Horizons. Eric, you're old school at its heart. You, you like good games, which is great. We need a Breath of Fire remake. Yeah, that'd just be uh, Not for modern audiences, just for games. <laughs> so, uh, Endymion, uh, what, are your, uh, what do you think of Beast Wars follow-up, Beast Machines? Um, not as good. Um, it was it was it was okay at first. It kind of got worse as it went on. But Beast Wars, man, that one has my heart. I just I had I had all the toys growing up when I was a kid. It just Beast Wars was so freaking badass. The way that Optimus Prime went trans metal, then he could like turn his knees into like a surfboard and fly like Silver Surfer. 
God, I loved it. I was so jealous of kids when I was younger that had the big Optimus Prime toy, like the big orange one you people probably know about. I didn't want to watch Beast Wars. I was on talking about the giant one. I was always so jealous of that. I never had it. So I love Beast Wars. It's so good. But the sequel, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's it's not a God. It's not Godzilla minus one. It's it's not Godzilla X Kong. It's just kind of somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know of anything I can think of where the sequel is technically better than the original off the top of my head. Besides, like maybe Mass Effect Two. No, oh. I don't really know. Street Fighter Two. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, dude over on Rumble says, "Endymion, get your ass on Rumble." I know. I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't know how to do any. I don't even know how you guys do this to begin with. The whole like, I've never done a live stream on my channel, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I should, oh. but I, I, do, I don't know how to do it, to be honest with you. I'll teach you. It's teach it's you. complicated. It really is. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. true. Uh, 60 Watt says, yo, 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 coming in hot from Rumble. The Wokies are waging war on, on escapism, so we can't ignore their message. They are deliberately destroying entertainment and escapism, including knitting. This is true, 60 Watt. Yes, uh, they have uh, got into the knitting world, which is just absolutely insane. Um, and Elijah Fire came in with the $17 Rumble rant, which leads us a wonderful transition into, into a, a brief announcement we have. It says, can hardly wait to see Melanie tonight on the quartering here on Rumble. I'm a big fan of all that. No homo. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Elijah Thank Fire. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so Melanie, let's talk about that real quick. Okay. You, you, guys, uh, you had a big announcement yesterday that uh, I guess starting tonight, you're going to be on with the quartering over on Rumble and YouTube or just on Rumble? Uh, it'll be on YouTube as well. Uh, he has his channel, uh, Quartercast Live. Um, that's where all the live streams are going. So yeah, Rumble and YouTube, I'll be on every Tuesday and Thursday night. So that'll be fun. I'm excited. Right. So people are going to be asking like, well, what's that have to do with side scrollers? Well, you're going to take a break from side scrollers and focus mm-hmm. on that for a little bit. And, yep. but, but you'll be back in time. I right? will. Yes. So this isn't goodbye forever with side scrollers or anything like that. Um, and like I was saying earlier, when we were chatting. Um, this is we're all in this space together. We're all growing together. We're all friends. Uh, so this little break, this will be a little break, but I'll still be back. I'll still be able to make appearances here and there in between. Um, so no yeah. worries. And we're we're obviously like really excited for you. Like, and you know, we'll be here when you come back, which is which is great. Thank we're excited you. to excited to see kind of what you do with with Jeremy over there, and would love to eventually have Jeremy on the show if you ever for sure. You know, so, uh, but I think that's outstanding. So good for you. But you'll be you'll still be on this Friday, and that'll be our last show yes. for a little bit here on Side Scrollers. Mm-hmm. And then next week you go back over to uh, work with Jeremy over at the quartering. So right, yes. Uh, so a lot of y'all uh, may be asking, with Melanie leaving, what does that mean uh, for for uh, various slots uh, on the show? Because Melanie's been on on Tuesdays and Fridays. Well, I can tell you this: starting next Tuesday, we'll have a uh, friend returning to the show. Razor Fist will be joining us on Tuesdays from here on out, which is great. So Razor will be joining and. Uh, and filling the the big hole that Melanie is, uh, is so, uh, see so. the friends always come back. We're never gone for good. <laughs> That's right. The right. so razor will be back starting next Tuesday. So flash on Mondays, razors on Tuesdays. So and then uh, the rest of the week with uh, with all sorts of friends. So uh, yeah, great stuff. Um, I want to get into the news, but you guys have been so wonderful uh, with the super chats. As uh, Blabs, you say this name way better than I do. Enough, Mama, an abuser of Streamlabs for $50 says a crazy call of Cthulhu is 20 to 25 feet tall up to Godzilla's ankle. He was also defeated in the story by sailors ramming the wooden ship into his chest, mortally wounding him, forcing him to hibernation. Godzilla wins. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like That's a fine. For play Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> He's still an interdimensional space god, but it's fine. <laughs> I'd still love to see that fight one day. I mean, Cthulhu is, correct me if I'm wrong, he's public domain, right? So that could happen in the movies. I'm pretty sure he's public domain. I'm like 90% sure. Mm. So if they wanted to, they could just be like, hey, guess what? That Godzilla versus cool. Cthulhu. That'd be actually amazing. Love it. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. And Retromeister came in with the $50 super chat. This massive. My goodness. Read that off, Labs. Look at oh, that. Look, look, look at that right there. 
It's like he's like got like stuck stuff to his fingers. Anyway, morning scrollers. All gamer gay is about is attacking biology, making females ugly and men like idiots. All long labeling those who love culture, gaming extremists, and alt right. Yeah, this is all happening in election season with the usual suspects involved. Hmm, the plot thickens. Yes. Hmm. Well, we're going to get into that today. Thank you very much, Retro Meister, and thank you so much, Enoch, mm -hmm. for your massive support. And uh, speaking of my goodness, massive support, CR Vox came Ooh. in with oh. one gifted memberships. Vox, the gifting machine, came in with the twenty. That is massive. I have you guys a question. Got... Yes. What are what are what are gifted memberships? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, don't have, have you? Ever, I mean, you you said you don't stream, right? So yeah, no idea. Well, even on YouTube, you should have access to memberships. You just yeah. probably haven't enabled them. It's like a paid monthly thing. They can get custom emotes and stuff like that in your chat. Um, so if people are gifting the memberships and they're um paying for everyone else to have a month of a of a membership so like that 5.99 or how much is it so on kind of like, like patreon basically but youtube version i guess yeah similar similar yeah, yeah. okay and you, you can make um, it so exclusive streams too or like streams that were aired and you don't want you don't want them visible for everyone afterwards you can make them members only stuff like that for like the i'm really too. showing my in, in, in ineptitude <laughs> this or whatever it is i have no idea i'm just happy yeah. to be here no idea <laughs> Like an old man like a YouTube look technology. for dummies. Just read yeah. through it. <laughs> Love that. Um, and we'll get this one. But once again, guys, thank you very much for your support starting the show today. It's just absolutely spectacular. Uh, I will read every single super chat before the end of the show, every single rumble rant, and every single direct donation before we finish up. Uh, but I do want to read Ned's, who came in with the twenty-seven ninety-nine Canadian monies. So, hey guys, Indy. Do you talk about the theme song? Uh, did you talk about the theme song from Beast Wars? Man, that was next level. Got me pumped for every episode. I miss shows like that. I just got my Homer. Uh, I just got, uh, I just at Homer, my Optimus I Primal. I think he means he, at home he just got his Optimus Primal Megatron in the mail. Maybe that's a little typo. That's okay. We understand. It's okay. <laughs> I don't. That's fine. But yeah, go ahead. Well, that's awesome. Do you want to do you want to talk briefly about the the theme song from Beast Wars? D Beast Wars was just amazing. Like, and just in general, like just the way they like redefined all the characters and the way instead of instead of them saying uh, you know, roll out and everything, they're like maximize, terrorize, and all that. It's so cool. And all the interesting animals they did, like Cheetor and Rhinox and Rat Trap, and what was what black was it Black Arachnia? Was that the name of the other one? I'm trying to pull names out of my head from a really long time ago. There was like one that was a tarantula that was on the 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 Predacons team, I believe it was. I think so. Hey, yeah, what? I love that show so much. I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. <laughs> it was just a, it's just yeah, it was a lot a lot of good stuff in the '90s, man. Like even even stuff like reboot. Like reboot was great too. There's so many great shows back then. Wow. Yeah. Roddy knows. Roddy in the chat knows. He says yes. Yeah, Black you should, Arachnia. You dream together. You and Roddy, yeah. you'd have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Black you guys Arachnia. Could. Yeah. Yeah, you guys would be all about it. And then there's, right. one, there's one called Rampage, right? It's a giant fire ant. Maybe Chad can tell me if I'm right. It's all coming back to me slowly. Sorry. Slowly but surely. All right. Yeah. Uh, I want to get this because this is massive before we continue. As uh, Matthew came in with a $100 Canadian money super chat. It says, I enjoy attractive video game characters, but I'm concerned that uh, idealizing them may create unrealistic beauty standards for real people. Not everyone can, uh, can mirror... I guess not everyone can mirror the looks uh, of characters like Marcus Phoenix or Kratos. That's yeah. fair. I'll just, yeah. But I'll say whenever I'm playing these video games or watching anime with these hot dudes in it, I don't ever think anyone in IRL land is going to look like that. I, I, I think there's a separation of it. Um, yeah. And usually I like games that have stylish art that doesn't look realistic anyway. So there's just m multiple levels into, okay, this isn't, you, you disconnect it from real life. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think the problem is that because everyone's so like, oh, I want to be seen, I want to be seen in these games, that they're no longer able to separate the two. And mm -hmm. so then they're like, oh, well, this isn't realistic anymore. So I can see from that point, but also we just have to teach kids that no, video games are not realistic. You're not going to look like that. No one's going to look like that. That's freaking yeah. like, yeah, like some like avatar or whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. You say nobody's going to look at it, but you know who does? Jake Gyllenhaal. And oh, Ray my Bell. God. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a t-shirt for you or like a sticker. 
all, all it takes all it takes is six months of rigorous training in a Hollywood studio to pay for it, and you too can look like eating cash shoots. That's it. That's all you get. Peanuts. <laughs> Just lots of protein. Yeah. All right. Take it for me. Go. Working out sucks, but you got to do it. So. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Let's get into it. Finally, uh, you know what? We're, we got a we got a couple couple things I want to talk about before we get into the hard news today. Which you better not skip it today. I won't. I won't. Hey, it's time for Today in Gaming History with Blast. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, guys, today is April 2nd. So, back in 1998, Metal Slug 2 was released, making it 26 years old. Defiance was released back in 2013, making it 11 years old. And did you guys know there's a game called Waifu Discovered 2? And that is now three years old and was released back in 2021. I want to look that up. I have a special, I have like a fourth one for you guys. That was oh. awesome. Oh, okay. Today. I had to admit it because I only had three spots. But guys, did you know there's a game called My Married Cousin's Need for Seed? <laughs> I'm reading this uh, for you guys. The only good part about attending your boring family meetups is that you get to oogle your hot cousin, Nodoka. But this time she brought back her stupid handsome husband to spoil the mood. While lamenting your cousin's married status, your great grandmother calls you and Nodoka away for a private conversation. She drops a bomb. Turns out your cousin's husband is inepotent and granny wants to see impotent? some babies. Yeah, that one. And granny wants to see some babies coming from you, Nodoka, ASAP. Great grandmother wants you to be the one to get her pregnant. Gross! <laughs> <laughs> this was also released a couple years ago today. Let me guess, it's a visual novel game. Yeah, that's a that's probably the the least weird visual novel game in creation. <laughs> I had um, to I had to share that one also. I was like this one, this one, you know, special announcement. Was that Defiance game based on that show that got canceled that was like really expensive back in the day? Am I wrong? Yeah. I think, I think oh, no. it is. It was on like sci-fi or something. So, I um, just anyway. You're welcome, chat. <laughs> I'm just imagining that scene from Top Gun where I guess what would you say you you're gonna screw your cousin's wife? Is that the yeah. idea of the show? Right? This yeah. this game? No, the wife is the or the girl, the woman is the cousin. So cousins, okay, well, regardless, yeah. I'm just imagining that's that scene from Top Gun where he's like, I got the need <laughs> for the need seed. for seed. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? They yeah. give each other high fives before they do it, which is great. Um, well, that's thanks for finding that blabs. I, yeah, honestly, this whole this thing in gaming history is a lot of fun. I always keep finding all these funny games. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, uh, speaking yeah. of, you've, you've been finding some wonderful games, and I'm I'm mm -hmm. tinkering with the idea of creating uh, a segment. So we're gonna try this out. This is Blab's Cutie Patootie Game of the Day. <laughs> what is this, Blab's? Um, this is called The Amazing Shrinking Giraffe, and it looks absolutely stupid as hell. <laughs> wow. But I had to share it. So it's called, you, it, the synopsis is, you are ginger, and everyday talking giraffe has been chosen to save the universe. You have been given powers to change size from the size of the universe to the size of an... I want Adam, and you are now amazing shrinking giraffe. So look how stupid this game is, and the very sound of the sound reviews. is just wild. Yeah, yeah, very positive over yeah. here. Yeah, 107 <laughs> reviews, guys. So yeah, check it out. All the Steam. family members reviewed that game. <laughs> like it just looks so weird. Look at that. It looks like something on like the Atari Jaguar. It kind of reminds me of a little bit of Crash Bash. But I like kind of want to play it, not going to lie. It's got those like old school RuneScape textures. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That has been Blab's Cutie Patootie <laughs> Game of the Day. <laughs> which is great. New, new segment for everybody, which is great. All right, let's get into the good stuff, though. It's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time. Where are you? There you are. It's time for hard news. All right, we've dilly-dallied around a lot. We've talked about some fun games. We talked about bodies and boobs and all sorts of stuff. And Jake Gyllenhaal this morning, which is a wonderful thing. But uh, and we, we had a couple quick hits, so we're just gonna we're gonna bypass into the the meat of today's show and uh, talk about a, a pretty big bomb that dropped yesterday. And I would say this 
on the surface, this may not seem like a big bomb, but I think it's a big response. Uh, and Demian, you were on a uh, stream yesterday with Valiant Renegade and that park place when they when they talked about the lawsuit, or I guess the cease and desist that has been levied at them at that park place from Black Girl Gamers. And uh, this came in yesterday as they actually read off the cease and desist. And then, uh, and then shortly after, they levied their response to this. Now, I think it's worth talking about this. And we, we've, we've talked about this, uh, I don't know, maybe a few days ago. And it kind of came down, I think, on Thursday or Friday last week. But we have not talked about their response. And this is the first time I believe that we've seen the actual um, cease and desist. Uh, but I want to highlight this part in bold right here. It says, we demand that you immediately cease and, des cease, and des cease and desist from posting or displaying any videos and or comments about Miss Lopez and BGG, Miss Lopez being the founder of Black Girl Gamers. We demand that by April 5th, 2024, you remove any and all links to references to videos, i.e. YouTube or Twitch, that... Uh, comments upon or visually depicts Miss Lopez and or the BGG brand. Um, so this was announced yesterday. And, uh, and Demian, I first would love to hear your thoughts on, on this as a whole. And Melanie, then we'll go to you. Mm -hmm. I think it's BS. I don't think it's going to go through, to be honest with you. Because you can't really, you know, sue someone or cease and desist for you just for talking about you. Especially because a lot of the information people are talking about is just public info that they've posted willingly on of, on their own accord so i mean if 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 that goes through and they actually win which i don't think is going to happen but let's say you know then everyone would be suing everyone and ceasing desisting everyone i mean mm -hmm. especially considering the fact that it's that park place they've if, if anything black girl gamers is like such a small fry thing that could attack them i mean th they're constantly at war with uh, disney which is obviously much bigger than black girl gamers and Disney never ceases and desists because they know it's never going to work. And I think that's the same thing here. There's no way this will ever go through. And it, it would be kind of like if I went on Reddit and ceased and desisted people who don't like me on Reddit. Like, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. Right. Like, you, like, just it's the Internet. Get over it. Like, you know, like the only reason why they're they're doing this is because they know that what they're doing is. It's it's grifting what what their mm -hmm. whole company's for you know what i mean so that's the only reason why they don't want you to talk about it because then they're going to lose their i guess you could say their 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 cushy job if you will yeah but there's there's no way they're going to get sued or anything if anything if they do take it to court that park place is going to destroy black girl gamers 100 percent. well uh that park place did respond and melanie i don't know if you saw their response i this did it was amazing <laughs> i loved it so this from over on X, where they actually posted it, says here is the here is that Park Place official response to the cease and desist letter sent on behalf of Black Girl Gamers, tagged in by the way, uh, which is great. Uh, dear Mr. Morris, this is that's the uh, lawyer representing. We represent that Park Place, its principals and employees, and we write right in response to yours of March 27, twenty twenty four. We have reviewed your demands and, on consideration, find them both meritless and ridiculous. <laughs> For those, for these reasons, we demands we, uh, your demands are rejected in whole, and we consider the matter closed. Please direct any further inqu inquiries as may be necessary to the undersigned by emails. <laughs> so they pretty much just took it and and uh, Dikembe Mutombo that to, uh, to half court and just said, uh uh, no no no. I mean, there oh. was no case there at all. Everything the Park Place said was backed by their own tweets black girl gamers tweets they specifically said looking for black girls who can uh do this campaign for this game potential campaign so and so um what is there to argue how can you say that they're not oh we don't have discriminatory hiring practices we don't we're not hiring based off of skin color or or gender or anything like that but then you have that tweet right there that says, hey, if you are black and you are a girl, let us know so that you can do this potential paid campaign. Pretty substantial to me. <laughs> What's interesting about this is, uh, and, and this, I think, really take this for what it is, right? The uh, the owner of Black Girl Gamers' uh, name is J. Ann Lopez, except that's not her real name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but her real name is actually uh, Jan Lopez McIntyre. 
which is publicly <laughs> oh, available. Oh, there's some white in there. <laughs> As you can see on this, uh, this is actually their their sheets, their registered number of uh, uh, accounts. And you can see kind of this is something that all, I, I guess they're a nonprofit, uh, registers. And it actually has McIntyre. <laughs> as, as her name so uh wow you wonder why that's not included in this whole thing and you know you can just kind of take that for what it's worth so um interesting stuff what like is it just a brand thing is it uh you know just i don't know i don't know i think if if they just wanted for fun to have a group of hey let's get some black girls together and we'll game together sometimes let's have a discord server just for black girls Hey, if they want to do that, I don't even think that's an issue. It's like, oh, okay, you just want to be around some friends who are other black girls. But whenever you – where people started having the problem was when they were trying to get freebies and, um, you know, campaigns and this and that based – that's where you run into issues. You can't do that based off of your gender, skin color, all that. That's when it becomes a problem. Yeah, not only that, when you want to join their forum or their website, you have to put in your real name. And, and your phone number and everything. So in case you do anything bad, they know your name and they can oh, contact wow. you. And you have to put an actual photo of yourself, like an actual government like photo of yourself when you actually <gasps> join their thing. So what? they can confirm that you are the actual, you know, whatever you are that you consider. And it's only black people and, or I guess black women. And then uh, non-binary, I think, was the only two uh, options. If you want to join People who are the, not male. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's basically. the idea, yeah. Yeah, yes. that's, that's insane. <laughs> it's, 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 like, I don't understand how these people don't un don't understand that this is so incredibly racist. Like, it's so like you. Yeah. Want to, like, once again, you want to like? I went out and I registered whiteboygamers.com because I thought it was <laughs> funny, and I also I also registered Muslim girl gamers because I thought that oh, was geez. funny. You know, like it, just because it's so stupid, it's so unbelievably stupid. You want to have a group uh for for people that's awesome just don't force your shit on everybody else i think that's that's the issue here and don't get upset when people talk about you and 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 say how stupid it is mm -hmm. and yes i can't wait to get the cease and desist for talking about black girl gamers um welcome to the internet you know we will point and laugh at the stupidity and racism that you have and that you that that you show it's crazy um now there has been a little dust up obviously between gothics who was on our show last week as well as uh, you know, as well as black or black girl gamers where they came out and they posted a 33 part response to uh, gothics and, and her response to them just pretty much saying they're hypocrites. They right. posted a 33 part response on X. Um, and it was one of those things where like those who were in it were like, oh, shit, until gothics very <laughs> eloquently put together, I guess, a 45 minute video breaking it all down and to talking about things that were left out and the, and there was just conveniently left out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all had a chance to watch that video or not, but I'm um, about halfway uh, done. Oh, you're halfway done. What are your thoughts on that? As, 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 uh, uh she, well, the part that I got to, which probably maybe like 20 something minutes in of it, the way she was explaining it was that she never actually blocked them. They blocked her. And then she proved it using a burner account, mm -hmm. how black girl gamers could essentially make the narrative look like that. She blocked them, which was never the case. I'm not finished the video. Of course. I don't know the full context. But if you go about like 20 minutes, I think, let me check out my, my thing here where I stopped, but it's, it's about like 20 ish minutes in. She explains it. Uh, yeah. No, about, about, about 19, 18 minutes in. She explains it. And uh, yeah, it's according, according to gothics again, haven't finished it, but according to her, it's, it's a load of BS basically. And uh, they are essentially lying according to her. So again, I have to finish the video first, but that's my opinion as of now. I, I think not it's seen a, the full uh, context just yet. Yeah, I, I think it, this is just a, a matter of um, matter of perspective for sure. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, what do we have? Wait, is this from uh, Melanie? I see you just dropped this. Should we talk about yep. this? Okay, I cool. I think it's worth discussing for sure. Okay. What happened this, now? Uh, drums. drums, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, so I basically, yeah, Grums made an April Fool's tweet. Uh, about you know our favorite Kotaku journalist <laughs> who has. Uh, First of all, been trying to make hit pieces and try to get, oh, we want people who hate this person or this person to talk bad about me, uh, Asmongold, so on and so forth. She's been going after Grums like crazy, even posting his picture, trying to get all of her followers to talk about how she thinks he's ugly, this, that, or the other. 
So he made a tweet yesterday from April Fool's saying that they were getting married. <laughs> and it was right. hilarious. And so now it looks like she is calling yeah. for his account, like trying to, to get them to report his account like this was some sort of harassment. All right, so let's go ahead and read this tweet. It says, yesterday a Kotaku reporter called for people to report my account for, for my April Fool's joke and, and get me canceled for it, just like they tried with Cabrutus, uh, the founder of the Sweet Baby Inc. Detected Group. They tried to create a story in Community Notes painting me as a harasser and failed because it was it's another lie. The official GDC board is, is complicit as one of the, their directors directly joined in the cancel pig campaign. Wow. Uh, I really don't like talking about this reporter, but if someone would collect all of her tweets about me, I think it would be clear she has been stalking my feed, yep. unfollowing, uh, following, unfollowing, blocking, unblocking. But now she is actively trying to cancel me. Wow. And this is yeah. from Brutus yesterday. It says, looks like a member of the GDC advisory board is siding with a journalist to report Grums, a game developer. But I thought GDC was on the dev side. And this is uh, Carolyn Marshall. Um, and there we go. A CEO and creative director and former uh, lead, lead developer on Heavy Rain, a GDC advisory board right there. Um, so yeah, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I would just like to use this as an opportunity to let you know this is a great example of why we need to take games back. Go to takegamesback.com and learn more about this because once again, these are the people running your industry. Uh, wow. So yeah, it's like she, this journalist has actively been trying to lead these cancel initiatives trying to ruin people's lives but then grums makes a joke and she wants to call harassment over that nobody on our end of the fence has been trying to ruin people's lives we just no. want to be left alone we want our video games to be video games again and we want all of this ideology taken out of our games but they're trying to ruin our lives. It's a big difference. I think well, the way Grums put it yesterday on Valley Renegades thing was that uh, we don't actually, on like our, our side of the aisle, we don't actually ask anyone to harass anyone. Yeah. Whereas their side never says that. They, they actively want people to harass. And when you think about it, what Black Girl Gamers did, they assembled like 10,000 people to essentially harass, mass report, whatever they can. Our side's never done that. Right. So that kind of shows you that. Yeah, we're not calling for deplatforming. We're not calling for, hey, let's anybody who's ever known her, let's get some gossip about her so that we can air all that out. We don't care. We just want our hobby. We want gaming to be gaming and everything that we like about it without all of the, the woke crap in it. But we don't, we're not trying to ruin anybody's lives. But by not, but listen, Melanie, what you don't understand is that your silence is violence and you're actively <laughs> ruining people's lives by not, by not embracing this and bending the knee. That, that's the problem, Melanie. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, that's crazy. Well, uh, good luck with that, Alyssa Mercante, for your cancel. By the way, she's been making the rounds. She's been doing interviews. She did an interview yesterday. Oh really? The offer, like, the offer is still stand. The offer still stands. Maybe I'll email her today and be like, "Hey, the offer still stand. Come on our show." She did a she did an interview with a uh, with a, a Twitch channel yesterday. It had like a hundred viewers on it, which is great. Uh, but come on our show and let's actually talk about this instead of get get out of your echo chamber. Let's let's do it. Let's actually have a a discourse here in good faith. Uh, and and actually talk about what your issues are, and you can you can call me and all of us racists and homophobes and bigots and all sorts. Of, you can you can do all that fun stuff, but you have to be open to having a conversation. You can do that. I would love for that. And they, she's you clearly can't call me a racist. No, 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 no. <laughs> they won't allow for that. You can. They call know if, all you want. They know if 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 they talk to someone that's not in their echo chamber, that their ideas will quickly fall apart. That's the reason why they mm -hmm. don't do it. Yep. Right. That's why it's called an echo chamber to begin with. They don't they don't want to reason with us because they believe that we are essentially everything that's wrong when it's actually the other way around. So, oh, well, Kotaku's oh, well. going to die soon anyway. Yes, yep. Kotaku will be dead soon. D-E-D -E -D dead for sure. 
Um, all right, let's let's go and move on. And uh, I'm going to skip a couple of these quick hits. We had a we had a couple stories about uh, J.K. Rowling and stuff. And sorry, rolling, rolling, <laughs> rolling on a river. Yeah, J.K. Rowling uh, going and you know with the whole Scottish law that just went into effect. But we can talk about that in another time. Um, Andy, I, I thought it'd be good to. You, you did a video about this, but uh, this is speaking of that park place. This is a story from that park place where um, I wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to kind of talk about this. And you can also promote your video you have going on. But kind of give us a rundown of, of this, this story here about this Cornerstone Interactive CEO. So essentially, I like I was explaining before, um, they essentially believe that we are all as in us, us as gamers and players, and I guess part of social media too, that we are what's wrong with the gaming industry and the money's being left on the table by not embracing uh, wokeness. If you actually scroll down, there's actually a part where the CEO will say along the lines, I think it's somewhere in there. It says, wokeism is just sparkling profits. Go up a little bit. And it says uh, right there, beware, spineless gaming execs. We are coming for the money you left on the table, surrendering your communities to angry, racist, and sexist. They mean us. <laughs> that poison is in your soil and you will never get it out that time for a new era of gaming so what they're trying to say is like they essentially want to get rid of um the people that are already here and they want to replace us with people that agree with them but that's not how the free market works right so like it's it's, it's like i've always said it's 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 the whole you know we're chasing the modern audience modern audience doesn't exist i mean nerd has said that plenty as well um it's it's basically a mess. It's a load of BS. If you look there, they have a survey that they did. They apparently they surveyed about two thousand people, and then they used that survey to somehow it says right there one thousand eight hundred and twenty four individuals participated in the survey, and they were also recruited there in little quotations. Right. So they have been they basically surveyed a bunch of people, and then when look and then said that these. Not even two thousand people represent the opinions of a, of apparently around three billion uh, gamers, right. which is about around how big the industry is. So that's that's insane. That's like if uh, you know you went somewhere and you wanted to get what you wanted to, if you wanted to spread your uh, opinion, and then you say that everyone thinks like you, but that's just not true at all. I mean, two thousand people doesn't represent three billion. Come on, no, that's what they're trying no. to do, right? And they're trying to push the narrative that uh, every like, oh, wokeism is actually great. It uh. It, it makes profits better, which is just not true. And it's, we know that's not true at all. I mean, Suicide mm -hmm. Squad is falling apart for Spoken, Destroy Luminous Productions, which made who they also made Final Fantasy 15. So I'll never forgive Black Girl Gamers for that. Um, and Wokeism has just kind of destroyed everything. If you think about all the games that are doing the best this year so far, I mean, Helldivers 2, no politics in it, uh, Pal World as well. Pal World has made so much money. There's articles where the people that made it don't even know what to do with all the money. They're right. so rich. They're like, we're confused. We don't know what to do. You know, that, that, that's a good problem to have, but they have that problem because of the fact that they don't push wokeness. Yeah. And you notice even like the Tomb Raider remasters, so did, so did really well. And those kept the problematic things in the games. Uh, yep. People don't care about all of these ideologies and all that, but they want to like that BBC lady said they wanted, they want to purge gamers out of our own hobby and they want to take over yeah but you know, another thing about the tomb raider thing that's really stupid is that crystal dynamics virtue yeah. signaled with that little excerpt before you played the game and they didn't even make it they weren't a part of it embrace or handed that off to aspire and saber games but because crystal dynamics is has has their name tied to the ip they just had to spit on it like that they hate and that's the thing crystal dynamics is all they're they're super woke they hate tomb raider if you really want to boil it down and i've made i've talked about this all the time they actually hate real tomb raider they like whatever they've made all the woke stuff that they keep making even more woke especially when you look at this tabletop rpg thing that they um oh you know, with the one-legged uh are, yeah but the sugar the feet arrow. girl <laughs> but they them looking uh, yeah they yeah they they don't they hate Tomb Raider. They hate Lara Croft. And they're the ones who have been in charge of her. So Embracer is the only reason why we got the remasters in the first place. Because Crystal Dynamics was not going to give that to us. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm i curious to see what's going to happen once their next mainline game comes out. If it even does. It's going to be terrible. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't. I hope it doesn't get to that point uh, with how Embracer's been just 
making a bunch of changes and stuff in general. But since they are partnering with Amazon with this stuff, it'll probably happen, unfortunately. And then in that case, once that flops, then then they'll get the IP taken away from them. Chris Dynamics will get shut down. That's what I anticipate happening. I mean, they're they're on thin ice already, right? Crystal Dynamics yep. already had the massive failure in the Avengers. Exactly. Which yep. is so and bad then, you can't even buy anymore. And with the Tomb Raider, their Tomb Raider trilogy that barely struggled to break even, these games had like 100 million plus budgets. Um, so yeah, they just haven't been bringing in the money and they're not going to with whatever they're working on next either. Yep. Well, if there's one thing that we know from what everybody's telling us is that gamers are toxic. We are so toxic. Those who play games for a living or who enjoy games as a hobby, you're toxic and something has to be done about it, guys. I'm sorry, but good news, everybody. <laughs> Melanie, I'm sorry. You must be shaking in your boots. Uh oh, oh no. As the first ever toxicity rating has been announced by and I can't believe I'm saying this, Melanin Gamers. <laughs> the toxicity rating. The world's first ever rating system to identify toxicity in online gaming. Hooray! <laughs> Melanin Gamers and Help Keep Watch have launched the first rating system identifying online gaming toxicity. Please check out our rating system for yourself. Oh, well, here we are. Um, it obviously they're obviously getting ratioed <laughs> uh, in the worst way possible. Uh, but here we are. Let's let's go check it out for ourselves and see what we have going on as we go to the website, toxicityrating.com, uh, the world's first rating system, monitoring racism, gender discrimination, and overall toxicity in online gaming communities. You know, I, I thought we'd learn a little bit about this, and then we'd actually go in and uh, we can provide our own thoughts on this and actually go in and rate some of these games. Uh, by the way, the website is not exactly wonderful as uh, every time you scroll down you get this thing popping up over your head uh, the gameplay it's kind of ugly and shit but um you can go in and actually see the ratings for each one of these games so uh melanie how about you get to pick uh call of duty fortnite Ooh, minecraft Apex, let's look Valorant. at minecraft because what the heck <laughs> minecraft okay, <let's> go. <laughs> minecraft rating 62 percent of people online experience toxicity playing minecraft online uh 56 <laughs> percent Experience racism, 54% uh, gender discrimination, 78% direct violent threats, 64% wow. sexual content. In Minecraft? In, I, yes, I, in Minecraft. I am so confused. That's right. <laughs> Who uh, was this poll made? Like, how did they create this poll with all this data? I know. This is well, the same thing I just talked about, the cornerstone thing. It's probably the same kind of survey. They just took people that they agree with to make the numbers. Mm -hmm. I also well, want to point out, when I first read it, I thought it said Melee Games for a second. I was like, what the hell are you guys <laughs> doing over there with the melanin? <laughs> <laughs> and 54% uh, got controlled substance conversations. So I'm guessing people are like talking about weed and drugs. Like 54% of people playing Minecraft get these conversations. Because that music is just so darn relaxing that it's all the weed guys over there playing the game. That's all. Oh my God. So okay. Dumb. So let's let's compare this to, I don't know, Call of Duty. Let's just see what they do. So 62% got uh, experienced toxicity playing Minecraft. We're, oh, wow, only a 16% difference. So 78% <laughs> of people experience toxicity. 90% uh, of the time, once again, in a game built around violence, 90%. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you that's probably not accurate because it probably is. But 90% <laughs> get direct violence threats. 67% uh, gender discrimination. Like, okay, I, I got a lot of questions here. Do you get, does this happen when you walk in and be like, like when you go into a lobby, and you say, hey, guys, I'm gay. Like, we, if you throw that out there, I'm just saying people are probably going to respond. But most of the time, you know, if you go in and you just keep your mouth shut and you play the game or I don't know, hear me out, mute the conversation. Right. Uh, you know, that's an it, option. It's it's a pretty big option. Or just roll with it, because that's the thing is, is when it comes to smack talk, people are going to go for the low hanging fruit. The first thing that they notice, like if you're a girl, yeah, we're going to get told to get back in the kitchen and stuff just like if you see a bald guy you're gonna make fun of that he's bald it's like the first it it, it it's all just 
banter. That's part of being a gamer. It's part of smack talk. So you it's just a multiplayer like, game too. Yeah. So, so you just go based off of just the superficial elements because that's first of all on comms. What are you going to even be able to find there? But I don't know. It's all just, it's all in good fun. That's part of the fun of it. Just like with sports, like they, they're smack talking like crazy. It's part oh of what God. makes it entertaining. You should, yeah, they should do this for, yeah. for actual sports. Like, could you imagine if they did a, if they did a toxicity survey uh, for players of, of basketball and hockey and, and every other sport in the world, hundred yeah. percent, you know, it's crazy. Yes, Andy, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. I just, just wanted to say like the, that, that whole thing is just, it's pointless, especially if like, this is what I'm talking about, how they say that they don't want you to escape with escapism anymore. They want to have real world politics and everything. So now you can't even play Call of Duty or something without these things happening. I, I know, for example, the uh, there's that branch of Homeland Security called Take This. They want to make it so that they're able to essentially listen in on your on your video chats when you're playing video games. <laughs> and then if you have wrong think, they can just ban you on whatever platform you're on. It's ridiculous. And I think again, yeah, like if you're if you're playing an online game, just just mute everybody. There's always an option in in the in the games you play to just mute everyone. It's usually what I do when I play multiplayer games. It's not because I don't want to be attacked or whatever. I don't care. It's just that people are usually when you when you play those games, they have really annoying mics. You'll hear like people yes. smacking pots and pans in the background and little kids screaming, right? And yeah, cats and dogs and whatever. Just mute it. Like you don't have to hear it. I, don't, I never understood in Minecraft having substance abuse conversations. Like come on, they're just pulling whatever straws they can. If you actually look at Melanin Gamers too. You'll see something in their in their info there that says they are a DEI consultancy group, which is I mean they're just oh, another yeah. sweet. They're baby. not DEI, it's just DI. They oh, change it. Just DI, yes. Okay. If you look at their uh, their Twitter here, uh yeah. and D and I. So they don't care about equity. They just the diversity and inclusion. <laughs> well, because so. it became equality, then it changed to equity, and then like that's not even good enough. So they completely removed all of it. Yeah, it's stupid, so, it's pointless. Melanin Gamers is dis is dedicated to increasing diversity and inclusion in video in the video game industry. It is more than a gaming community. It is a show of support, a cry for some desperately needed change, and as a safe space in online and in real life community for people of color to come together, share ideas, and feel represented. We want to be seen and heard. It is a necessity in the current climate we are living in. And we believe that by creating this platform, we will be able to strive towards changing an industry so that it reflects all those who are part of it. We are not calling for needless tokenism, but a real shift in the tide from the grassroots to the very top. Well, good for you, Melanie. Like Gamer. Gamers. Yeah, bingo. It's yeah, it's it's Black Girl Gamers Part Two. Just not as yeah. not as successful yet. I mean, literally to the point where Melanin is then their name. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Now, let's go back to this uh, this toxicity rating here because I figured we would we would go ahead and let's just fill one out while we're here. Let's just go ahead and make make our way here, and because this will help determine toxicity ratings, right? So to help gamers and parents know what to expect. So as right now, games are rated for what happens in story mode, not what happens online. By completing this survey, you're helping create a new rating system that factors in online community and play each uh, to play each game. The rating system will detail the level of racism, gender discrimination, and overall toxicity enabled by the communities playing online games. The survey is completed anonymously, and we only use the data collected to help inform the ratings. So once again, you... You, gentle viewer, can open up a tab right now and go to toxicityrating.com and also complete a survey and, uh, and, and help out, help the cause here, which is important. So uh, let's start off. Let's, let's do this together. Which one should, which game should we choose? Call of Duty, Fortnite, Minecraft, Apex, Valorant, Animal Crossing, New Horizon. Oh, Animal Crossing. What? Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> There's hate speech in Animal Crossing? You got okay. Right. All right. Please indicate if the interactive user generated aspects of the game, such as audio and or text, include any of the following types of content. This is the uh, user generated sexuality. Please indicate if the if the interactive uh, user generated aspects of the game, such as blah 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 blah, uh, depicts 
or inferences or references to or depictions of sexuality suggestiveness provocative unattire or nudity no Melody, you get to pick no i'm oh, gonna no, say no okay. no sounds good no please indicate uh let's see controlled substances any references to illegal drugs abuse prescription drugs alcohol or tobacco no no okay well i mean right. there is abuse what's his name uh -oh. tom nook Oh, <laughs> abusing you for like rent and stuff, I guess. But that's like, that's true, not. Come but on. that's that's just right. capitalism. All right, yeah. It depends on what side of the fence you're on. If you consider that abuse, <laughs> oh, but this is just the legal drug, prescription drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. So, oh, then you know. no, it's no. a Nintendo game. So no. Okay. okay. Uh, crude humor. Is there any crude humor? Oh wow, including references to belching, flatulence, vomiting, <laughs> or vomiting. There? For human, uh, humorous. Oh, you do. You can't get. I'm gonna say yes. You can get sick. Well, that's if you get stung by a bee or something, or by one of those things, and then it makes your character turn red and get. Well, yeah, we'll say yes. Okay. We'll say it's on the mild side, though. Okay. Okay. Mild side. Now, these are all great questions, and, and we are really doing our best to help change <laughs> gaming right now as we're doing this. So we'll do mild racism. Here we go. Um, it includes usage of in, uh, inference or or uh, descriptions of racism, a racist, xenophobic, or race-based discrimination and or hate. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, I Tom no hates you, so there you go. That's one hundred percent. Yeah. Where did you experience racism? Uh, gamers' names. Yes. Please describe the racism you I occurred. Yes. Um, Tom Nook did not adjust the rent prices based on our skin colors. Yep. <laughs> Cause he's an animal and you're a human. So therefore True. it's like, uh, it's uh xenophobic or whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm outraged. I'm, I'm literally shaking. That's like this graphic <laughs> designer lady I saw. She had her, her, rates based on whatever your ethnicity was you got a different rate for her services different hourly rate wow that's <laughs> crazy all right uh next all right violence is there any violence yes they they take down the trees it's unbelievable i would say a little bit yeah because like you can't get bitten by a spider or stung by a bee and that, no that's graphic yeah it's ridiculous uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely did you experience vi vi how do they put violence and racism in, in the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same thing, I guess. The uh, spiders don't like... Do the spiders are scary, and I feel victimized like they were feeling. judging me based on my race. <laughs> you feel victimized. Yeah, you weren't a spider like them, so that's it. <laughs> they jumped you. Yep, that's uh, it. Ridiculous. The spiders hurt my feeling and making me feel victimized. Does that sound good? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> All right. Uh, gender discrimination. Absolutely not. <laughs> does, it, does it totally go? Oh, uh, I thought this is anonymous. Hold oh, on. We're, wait, we got to add number or Z's or is good. Z, Zim, them's him. They. <laughs> um, what the hell is Kyle? L, L, I, I just made it up. Put it, oh, okay, that's the end there. of it too. There you go. <laughs> what is my age oh well that's easy to say clearly 55 and older <laughs> uh what country am i from don't talk to me no, no 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 zimbabwe zimbabwe okay i'll i'll, I'll uh I'll, I'll do it i'll do it just say canada but... canada's pretty well there we go i live there no, so no, no, you say zimbabwe. oh no yeah zimbabwe. i'm in canada Zimbabwe is an option. Zimbabwe will be submitted right there. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. We appreciate your input. Want to help some more? Uh, no, I'm good. Anyways, you can go to toxicityrating.com and help rate all of this stuff. It doesn't. They don't really give any details as to how uh, all this kind of comes together uh, or or how to rate things uh, or or the percentages based off of it. They just kind of put it all together. And they'll only let you know that the current ratings are based off of literally – hundreds of people uh putting in ratings right now so that that's that's where you see right there so anyways uh i've invited melanin gamers on the show to uh to get their perspective and exactly why they feel necessary to create something like this 
we'll see what what then and, and i'd love to hear how they don't feel represented in video games uh I, I, these are legit questions that i want to ask and i'm open to having a wonderful conversation will it happen probably not what uh, i don't understand well, is that that website's for like to protect children right essentially uh, it's, it's just, they want to update, they want to update things. They want to update the, uh, the, the ESRB, the entertainment software, software. Okay. Rating. Cause I'm like, if you're making it's like, cause, cause you said it's there for parents and stuff. And then you put call of duty, but call of duty is a rated M for mature game. Mm -hmm. So that, yes. that, that, that kind of goes Makes against no the whole concept. Yeah. Go, you let your kids play that to begin with then. Now, Blabs, you wanted to talk about their code of conduct conduct. You said this was really funny, huh? Yeah. If you go through it, it's like, you're not allowed to say a peep a peep because everything is somehow racist there's even classist you can't be classist it's like what the hell does that even mean is that like like middle class is that what they're talking about like everything is like whoop you can't say a peep not a discourse like if, if they think you're attacking the poster and not the actual point that they're making you're out like it's 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 a lot so that's why i was like wow this is too funny like, you can't say a peep in this thing you know they say we're actively working towards being a safe community. And this, this makes me go back to uh, Gothic's response video to the whole black girl gamer thing. Um, and, and kind of their, their tear down of her. She said something like really profound in her video. And I, I think she really hit it on the hit the, uh, the head of the nail. She said, when you create a safe space, you create a bubble to where when there's actual friction attached to it, you don't know how to handle it. Right. You and I think that's that's a big part of the issues that we're seeing is is. Listen, there are pieces of shit out there. There are racist people. There are sexist people. So there, there, there are people out there who whatever. Right. Uh, there are people who don't like white people. There are people who don't like black people. There are people who don't like Muslims and Christians and go, go down the line. Right. I hate them white people. And white <laughs> people are the worst. Put it on their blab. Clip it. <laughs> That's it. Indy going, I hate them white people. Uh, I, I love it. Them. But here's the thing. If you're in a bubble and you create your, a, a safe space, when you actually encounter that stuff, you'll have no idea how to handle it. And that's what we're seeing in a situation like this. Come on in. Come on in. It's like, it's like being under a cover and being mm -hmm. warm. And then there's cold out there. And you go out, you go out outside the cover and you don't know how to handle being cold. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And I know that I'm saying all this stuff and it's common sense to you, but this is not common sense to them. And it's amazing to me that people are so um, sheltered. Pathetic. Even today. It's, 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 making, it's, it's making a weaker generation on purpose is what they're doing. They're making victims with victim mindsets. Yep. And all it's going to do is make everything worse. They've created a petition on change.org. And their petition is lead to reform ESRB's reporting system to combat racism, racism and toxicity. And the thing is, you can actually see how many supporters there are. There are 50 supporters updated six days ago. <laughs> so, so like so they, they have a change, they have a change.org petition. Yeah. That is What's the goal of the change.org petition? To reform the ESRB reporting system to combat racism and toxicity. So they, essentially, guys, they don't actually have any power. They just want to make this petition to have a change. They don't really have a whole lot of like stuff going for them. And I've looked into them. I can't even really find like their sponsors. Their website is extremely cluttered. Like If you go to melanin.games.com, it is very cluttered. And the thing was, I went and looked at what these people were saying. And one of the articles was saying, black washing characters in the entertainment industry, is it bad or okay? And essentially they were like, well, sloppy seconds, but at the end of the day, I'm okay with showing that black characters can play the same as white characters and established white characters. So it's like, so you do want the sloppy seconds and gotcha. So it's just... It's a lot of woke bullshit in a lot of different angles. The end. How dare you? Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Unreal. All right, let's uh, let's lighten things up a little bit, as we all understand that uh, we live in a toxic space, and I hope that everyone can find their bubble that they can get into, uh, which is hey, you'll be all right. Um, okay, let's let's move on to uh, another story here. Do you remember last week uh, we talked about 
this is, I don't know if y'all saw this, Melanie. I don't think you stream on Twitch. Do you? Do you stream on Twitch? I do. Yeah, I multi stream. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was suspended for two weeks, but I multi stream again and they still haven't banned me, surprisingly. But yeah. <laughs> so they announced, uh, do you have hype trains? Do you ever do hype trains over on Twitch? Uh, they, they have, but I don't really promote them, but yeah, they're okay. there. So, uh, so yeah, they, uh, they have hype trains and they upped the level, the, they upped the high level, the highest level that you can get on a hype train to, uh, level 100 on a, on a hype train, which the math was done on that. The amount of math, the amount of money that would need to be, uh, generated through a hype train. Now, uh, Andy, I don't know if you know what a hype train is, but once uh, I'm an old man right now, what are we talking? <laughs> what, what is a hype train? What is streams? What are we talking? Cool. Oh. So a stream is what we're doing right now, but a hype train yeah, in particular yeah, okay. on, on Twitch is when uh, a certain number of succession, uh, a certain number of events like a sub or a gifted sub or uh, bits were come in, uh, a certain number of that of those actions happen that support the creator in a specific amount of time. Then it starts a hype train and it's a number, it's a, uh, a link at the top of the chat and the number goes up. The more support you have, the higher the number goes up. And in theory, the more rewards the community gets, they get out like special emotes and stuff. And uh, it's a great, okay. it's, it's a good way to kind of gamify the process for a Twitch streamer. Well, Twitch announced that they are raising the, the limits from level 10, I believe, to level 100. Uh, and that is a dramatic, dramatic raise. And uh, there was a guy named, named Pirate Streamer. And uh, he's a pretty big, pretty big streamer. He was the first to reach the level Ooh. 100 mark. And you may be asking yourself, how much is that worth right here? And uh, he, there's a little clip of him in a banana outfit here. It says, a hype train complete at level 106. Your community has contributed 54,380 subs. Holy moly. Okay. Let's put that in perspective really quick. Uh, and as you guys know, I like to bust out the calculator when uh, when doing this and the amount of money that has uh, been generated here. Let's say he's on the 70-30 split, which is most likely the uh, the cost. So the average subscriber is $4.99. He gets 70% of that, which comes out to $3.40, uh, three, about $3.50. And so $3.50 per sub times 54380 generated $189,949 just from subscribers. Wow. Just from subscribers, which is just insane. And then to uh, to couple that, in addition to the $190,000 generated, there's also the bits here. The bits, real easy way to do this is put a decimal point right here at the end, uh, in between after the second one. So that is uh, the equivalent of $82,253.86. So uh, just to kind of do some quick math, that level 100 uh, cost in total, um, it totally it generated $272,203 from a single stream. Andy, you going to start streaming anytime soon? <laughs> that's crazy dude yeah so you're saying so, i should stream then I, I, yeah i, I think yeah. it's worth giving it a go yeah um, i should probably try that sometime <laughs> so like good. terrible yeah. though well good for him I, here is his response by the way uh he got a little choked up as somebody would if they made a quarter million dollars <laughs> for uh for playing or for streaming this is his response i can't wait to see what you guys make man I grew up in a time in the internet where there was wild abandoned creation. We had all kinds of shit. Everybody had a stupid website for their cat. And now we're trapped in these monolithic social media towers. And there's very little creation for a lot of people. They're afraid to try it. They're afraid to step outside the box. And you are now. You know, I, I that's my first time seeing that, and I think he's 100% right, though. Like, there's so many people who are afraid to actually just do something, um, mm -hmm. today, and I, I think he nailed it. So, hey, man, like, 
go get it. Go get the bag, man. $272,000 in one stream. Like, go, man. Congratulations to him. And, I mean, taxes uh, will kill him, but, you know, he'll still make money from it. It's okay. Right, right. I mean, you know, cut that in half, right? So by the time he's done, it'll be $135,000. But still, that's pretty spectacular. And uh, you can do some really, really, really great things with $135,000 $135, by the time it's all said and done. If I made that much money in one stream, you just do that once and you just sleep for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That's what I would do. I just, yeah, I would just be like, yeah, hey, I'm out. I'm going to go play video games for the next two months and then I'll come back and do one more stream and that's it. That'd be a dream. I'm out of here. Oh, God. Yeah, just do quarterly streams. That's your stream schedule. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be great? That would be the dream. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, maybe maybe we should just do one long quarterly show for side scrolling. <laughs> it's a week yeah, so long show. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, uh, some more quick hits before we get to some super chats to finish up. Uh, Blabs, you wanted to talk about this. This is from um, it's from Screen Time. Wonder Woman and Shazam are appearing on Disney Plus. What's, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, this makes no sense because these are both Warner Brothers entities, and yet somehow, and this isn't even April Fool's joke. Disney Plus made a video of all the April releases for Disney Plus, and these two titles are on the list. And I don't understand how that's that's a thing because they're Warner Brothers. They should be on Max, but somehow yeah. they're on Disney and Hulu. Well, I mean. It kind of makes sense. Those movies are technically no longer relevant anyway, right? Because of the DCU's right. happening. Yeah, so but why would you give to, it to Disney? Why don't you just to keep make it any any amount of money as you can on 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 the back catalog? Disney does the same right. thing with their stuff too. They put it on, you know, cable network TV as well, right? I think I think they they finally brought a few of the Marvel Disney Plus shows on onto cable TV, like Miss Marvel and whatever, just to generate whatever they can off of it, I guess, because they already made it. I you know, so it makes sense to me. Um, I wouldn't watch those movies personally, but uh, that, that's just me. <laughs> no, they're not that great. But yeah, I just thought it was kind of weird. They're yeah, whole, they were announced a whole bunch of like I, like titles for April, and none of it seems enticing. Well, that and, makes sense, uh, right? We're, we're, we're like the strike just happened. Still, if you think about it, so much content has been like backlogged. So I don't know. I'm not really excited, honestly, for most movies this year. Only pretty much only want to see Deadpool, Wolverine, and uh, Monkey Man. That's pretty much it. But I was also referring like to like previous titles. Like but there was yeah. nothing interesting, nothing to come out. I think Disney said they're they're massively uh, turning their money down in terms of how much they're going to spend every year on making stuff too. So, yeah, Disney Plus is a lost cause anyway. It ruined oh, yeah. it ruined Disney. Oh yeah. Yep. Let's uh, let's finish up. But this is kind of an interesting one from uh, from Niche Gamer once again. This and this was posted yesterday, and I'm going to assume this is real. Uh, but it can also be an April Fool's joke, but I don't know. As uh, Vladimir Putin orders Russian government to make their own video game console. Uh, do we have any fact? Are we sure? That, I guess I've been yeah. seeing that. I think I saw that uh, even before yesterday. Yeah, I've posted. seen that like a couple of days ago. Yeah. Okay. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said the Russian, the president's order to make a domestically produced video game console is aimed at bolstering Russia's native video game ta uh, industry talent. Um, blah, blah, blah. It talks about that. The new order from Putin came after a meeting uh, on the socioeconomic development of the Kalingrad region, where the Russian leader also called on the government to look into developing their own operating system and a cloud system to deliver games and, pro and programs to users. Uh, they set a deadline for June 15th, 2024. Um, a creation the actual game console is being planned for sometime between 2026 and 2027. They don't have to make anything. Russia just has to go buy the Ouya <laughs> and the Soldier Boy console and they're good to go. No, it just is two. real. Um, there, was an article, the Ouya. <laughs> there was an article published five days ago from Game Rant saying Russia's making its own gaming consoles. So. Hey, it's let's real. hope the games aren't woke. I might buy one. Yeah, right? <laughs> That'd, that'd be, it may, uh, it makes sense, right? Because because of the whole Ukraine thing, they got like yeah, Nintendo's the turned them everything. down. Like everybody's turned um, sales down. That's in it. Russia. That's awesome. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we'll keep an eye on that. What if they just straight up make like Super Mario Brothers, but it's like Super Ruski, Ruski <laughs> Brothers, Super Ruski Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> Dimitri and Boris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blast, that should uh, be great, actually. 
Blab, so how about you? We, let's, let's get to some super chats before we get to some memes today. Why don't you start yeah. off with Dave? Well, Randy. actually, no. We're going to do Mojo first on Locals because he's oh, been yeah. on this one. Mojo said a Locals tip for $3 saying hot take. Skyrim is overrated. Let's go. Okay. I don't All right. Thank you, Mojo. Oh. <laughs> I like Skyrim. I 100%ed yeah. that game. I liked it. Wow. Yeah, I don't agree with your statement there, Mojo, but that's all right. David says, um, Dev has a great video on the uglyfication of art and the Marxist philosophy of demoralization behind it. Well, Dev actually will be on the show tomorrow, so yay. <laughs> um, Chris B says, can't apply rational critical thinking to a subset of people who entirely reject rationality. Reasoned arguments never work with the alphabet cabal. Mm -hmm. Or is that cable? Cabal? Nice cactus cabal. cabal. Come on. Picture there, too. <laughs> Miku says, rank Gears of War 1 through 5. 2 was the best, then 1, then 3. Judgment. And then I didn't then play the other. Then 4. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, Pastor, woman be been choosing evil since the Garden of Eden. <laughs> it is <laughs> true. <laughs> Joey says, who will win a fight? Superman, Godzilla, Dr. Manhattan, Cthulhu, Shuma Gorath, or Goku? Oh. Go Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> I don't know. It's almost Dr. like Manhattan we can make a show about that. I'm pretty sure Dr. Manhattan, like, doesn't he exist, like, outside of, like, the three-dimensional space of reality or something insane like that? I like, don't even know that is. life and stuff. He's from Watchmen. Know, yeah. So. Yeah, I think Doctor Manhattan would win. We got Shuma a lot Gorath of Goku pretty strong too, in though. chat. I kind of think Goku, to be honest, he's like Super Saiyan three at one point, right? So you know, um, Cody, woman in forty k played Tyranids and orcs statistically. Thank you. I just butchered that. <laughs> Maiku says, "Love Gears of War as a kid. Hated the wall bouncers, though." I think those enemies were in the first game, right? They got rid of them, though. Am I wrong? There were some I enemies that were remember. like on walls and stuff all the time. Yeah. Josh says playing in BG3 yesterday and got the option to kick a squirrel. My wife was like, kick him. She's a net tech. I was like, what? <laughs> see? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and women always choose bloodshed. Yeah. We do. I, I blew up all my people in Roller Coaster Tycoon. I really had a lot of them. Just, ju just ask a woman what she did in Sims and they'll have stories. Yep. I've never played Sims though, but I would probably blow everyone up. You guys probably put them in, <laughs> you the, drown in, the them in the pool. Too. That's yeah. the there best. You go, see? I would do that. Yeah, drown them in the pool. Andrew says, any advice for leveling up characters in Final Fantasy? Every time I do, so do the frigging enemies. In 8? Okay, so the reason for that is because enemies in, in Final Fantasy 8 level up with you. So Final Fantasy 8 is actually based on a very similar system to this other game called Saga Frontier, also made by Square. So what you really want to do in, in 8 is actually keep your level as low as humanly possible, and you want to instead increase your stats through either uh, modding your guns which you can only do a little bit of, and the junction system, which is when you pull magic from enemies in the game. And if you put a lot of magic into your actual abilities, it'll make you a lot stronger, a really good way in the beginning. In the very, like, I, I play all the Final Fantasy. So the very first very first part in eight, you're in Balam Garden. If you go to the uh, zoo there, you can fight the giant T-Rex enemies, junction them and pull Kuriga out of them, and then put Kuriga into your HP and you will immediately have over 3,000 HP. So... Final Fantasy VIII is is let it's 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 a game more about working smarter, not harder. So you want to okay. keep your level down, but all your magic and stats above, and then that way you'll destroy everything. But if you like grind, you'll just make everything harder for yourself. So good luck. Eric says I have a little hate for the original Final Fantasy VII, seeing how my favorite RPG is Xenogears, though. Xenogears is great too. I think that's the, that game is interesting because. Xenogears is one of the only games where they actually ran out of a budget near the end of it. So you play that game and the first half of it is like the most amazing RPG you ever played in your life. And then the second half, all of a sudden, it becomes like a text-based visual novel because they just ran out of budget. So they just like couldn't do the story. <laughs> and then like that's why that's like one game they like need to remake. Or no, it wasn't Xeno. Yeah, it was Xenogears. Yeah, I'm right. Because they also made Xeno Saga, and then those guys went off and then they made uh well Xenoblade, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles. So, yeah. Surfer, oh, Suffer So Proud 83 says, quick, someone in the chat with more money than I am, make Craig sing Do You Believe by Cher, do you believe by Cher in a super gay and flamboyant <laughs> accent with hand gestures? This one's from Mel and your man crush, Jake. That'd be funny. Thanks, Suffer So Proud. That will not be happening today. <laughs> Patriotic says, cross-pollination is our strength. I'll be listening to Corey in a little bit more. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Methodist gifted five size growers memberships. Woohoo! Thank you very much. Oh, Methodist, thanks so much, man. Appreciate that. Um, Elsid 
for member for four months. We also get one member message per month, like this one. This is true. Right. I usually abuse Craig when I do mine. <laughs> um, Apollo says, oh, love you guys. Member for four months. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Vet Gamer says, and Damien, if you start streaming every now and then, I am there. Maybe. I'll try eventually. I got, I've always said on podcasts, for example, like I don't even have a desk. I edit on my couch. Like, you can't Let's see because I got the virtual background, obviously. Like right now, I'm 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 literally talking to you guys with my laptop sitting on my Death Stranding suitcase collector's edition box thing. <laughs> and then I have my little mic on the side. Like I, I don't I don't have a proper setup. I don't even have like a chair. Like I said, I sit on my couch. Love so it. I love it. It goes to show cool. you just like how non-professional I am. So I need to buy a desk and a chair first. And then I can probably stream. There so, you go. Sorry. Even Nakamon <laughs> says Beast Wars is the best Transformers series. True story. In order to get Black Arachnia right, the animators went to a strip club for research. That does not surprise me at all. <laughs> if you look at her, she's awesome though. Mike here says if you get unrealistic beauty standards from video games, you already need to touch grass before you picked up the controller. Exactly. Um, Suffer says, gonna miss you, Mel. Um, Eris, un, you're an angel that fell from the sky. Aww. Thank you. Um, Jean says, She'll Final be back. Fantasy She'll 6. Be back. Yes, I'll be back to you. It's all yeah. good. F uh, Final Fantasy 6 is 30 years old today. Yes. But, um. That's the only other Final Fantasy that needs a remake, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I don't think any games need a remake in today's gaming industry. Um. Inakuman says, need for C, Jeremy's origin story. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Scarfin the Strange says, um, Nithoga, I think? The second son of Cthulhu was purported to be big enough for his fingers to be mountains and suck sunk a continent by just waking up. Wow. Okay. You get him to fight Godzilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Inakuman comes back and says, don't knock that need for seed game, Melanie. If dude didn't bang their cousins, Jeremy wouldn't have come to existence. Where would it be without geeks and gamers? <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Retromeister says the composer of Beast Wars and Machines is the same one who did Reboot, if anyone remembers that show. And yes, I want soundtracks to them all. Also, Scott McNell is a Canadian voiceover legend for being Dinobot and Rat, Rat Trap at the same time. Oh, Dinobot's so cool, dude. He's the Velociraptor. He's mm. so badass. He's so cool. Trevor became a YouTube member. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Lance says, since Blabs is showcasing cute small things, let's have her judge whether small game characters are cute or not. Let's start with Kelp Trap, the Kremlin, not the Borderlands character. So I looked him up. I think he's pretty cute. Not going to lie. But oh my God, a little dog. Hello. That's yeah, also I got a little dogs. They're just, she wants to be in my lap, so she's going to be here for a bit. Yes, but I did look up that Kelp Trap guy. He's cute. He's got a lot of teeth, though. He's toothy. The worthy one says, Alyssa, you going to learn today. She's never going to learn, ever. That's the problem. <laughs> Initial C says, those who cannot take a joke become a joke. True. And um, thank you for that one. I think I got everybody over there. Okay. Mike has bad knees. Member for six months. That chick is way too scared of Melly. Look at Mel's lion mane. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nissan says, oh no, Craig, I heard a rumor. Will certain himbo who is obsessed with Bailey JB and side scrollers soon inquire foot clan ninjas need to know? What? I, I don't. Uh, I have no idea what I just read, but there he is. I don't know, but I just fun. saw a puppy that looks like Toto from Wizard of Oz. Oh, her name is Lola. That's so hey, cute. Hey, by the way, um, I just want to. I just want to put this out there publicly. I've been while while you've been reading those off labs, and thank you guys very much for your support. Uh, I had a guy DM me just now who is writing an article about, um, and I think I mentioned this to you before uh, before we went live. But there's a guy who's writing an article about this our side of the internet right and he reached out to me um with with questions um about this and i told him i'm not gonna i don't want to be a part of his article right and he pushed and he said well the article is not very flat flattering to you right now and i said okay so oh. i said okay well, i i will talk to you but it needs to be live so uh if he wants to, if he wants to have the conversation maybe we'll do a live stream later this afternoon where he he, because I don't want anything taken out of context for this article. Um, cause, uh, he has some very basic questions, um, that, you know, like I said, I don't want anything twisted at all. So, um, that's kind of where we're at. So I just, just want to give you guys a heads up on it. And I, one of the things that kind of drove me crazy about it, he says, I'm writing an article that will, 
uh, be seen by a lot of uh, game developers and, and game investors. Um, it will it will uh, partly use uh, I it will partly use what happened with um, speaking of Irina, the the lady uh, yesterday, the no the no white gamers lady uh, from last week. Uh, the gist of the gist is what game developers should understand about your community and others like it. And I responded to him and said, when you say your community, you mean your community as well, because our community is people who play games and are passionate about them, the same people that you should be building games for. Um, and they didn't like that very much. So anyways, so I'm just giving you a heads up. We'll see. We'll see what comes of that. Okay. Fear the Tardo for five dollars. Hi, Remedy Mac. Is Remedy Mac fine? Because got parking ticket and written all over it. Wait. Tarda got nervous and mixed up mixed up fine and tickets. Sorry, look at him. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked that bitch for dollar ninety nine. <laughs> Melanie roses are red, so is my heart. Be my mama. <laughs> okay. a rhyme, bro. Okay. <laughs> like shit, why not? Vet gamer says, Melanie, talk about Tomb Raider. Never noticed. No way, not me. <laughs> Uh, Retro says, Embracer plus BlackRock equals WEF. Correct. Lance says, if you guys get anything less than 90% toxicity rating, I'm unsubscribing. I only follow real gamers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rebound for two euros says, I bet toxicity maps inversely to amount of melanin. Huh. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. Torgo the White, all hail Ron Coleman and all his works. Look at him. He's the guy that's doing the that park place, uh, the the yep. cease and desist, for, and then mm -hmm. then their defense. Adam says, "I would like to know if they count how many black players are dropping the N word. I know in Call of Duty and especially 2K Sports, that's something. Oh yeah." Mm -hmm. Retro Meister says, "This toxicity rating sounds like something from Demolition Man, involving the verbal morale law created by corpos, otherwise called the thought policing." Mm hmm. Lord Splitch says, low tier God could easily skew the toxicity rating towards a negative <laughs> by himself. Um, Inakwa Mom says, that's right, government, worry about trash talk in video games. Meanwhile, Philadelphia Eagles fans throw car batteries and cinder blocks as opposing players' heads. That's okay, I guess. That's right. <laughs> Equality. The worthy one. Not gonna lie, it makes me cringe as a black person myself hearing others overuse melanin. Fuck's sakes, a lot of them didn't even know the word existed until a few years ago. Seriously, shut up. Thanks, worthy one. Appreciate you. Uh, Heart and Souls, member for seven months. Warner Brothers is in financial trouble. DC and other stuff, been on Netflix and other streamers. Mm, interesting. Yeah, well, they keep doing like the wrong, they pick the wrong, pick the wrong stuff all the time. Uh, Nissan says, Putin cares more about video games and profits they contribute than any of our liars, cough politicians. <laughs> Dave says, I think the success of Helldivers 2 is one of the best opportunities we have, along with Gamergate 2. The game is, al is already entering the lexicon because it's so meme worthy. Perfect for mocking the woke. Correct. I'm doing Helldivers 2 is the way to do it. That's like the future of the industry, in my opinion, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. of how they're developed and everything. Um, Shadow Mac says, Best podcast on the interwebs. I love you guys. It will. Thanks, Shadow Mac. Robert says, Mel likes Godzilla 1998 more than a new one. Sadly, yes. If I had to watch a, a Godzilla right now, rewatch, I'd pick that one over it. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ryazel says, Let's keep bringing back common sense into the gaming sphere. See, go. That's the goal. Where Melanie? Here's some butter in all, in all the memories. Thank oh. you. It's like she's dying, guys. She's not dying. <laughs> I'll be, be back. back in a little bit, guys. Relax. <laughs> Dylan says, Angela fell from the sky. You know, the last time Angela fell from the sky, we got the devil. It is true. <laughs> Some would argue that Melanie is, in fact, the devil. It's all right. <laughs> Nathan has become a member for nine months. Thank you, Nathan. Polly says, why doesn't the sphere criticize Final Fantasy VII Remake and Time Ghost? Oh, I don't like those. But I just I didn't, know I didn't the like the Final side. Fantasy VII remake at all. I think the overcomplication of the whole, that whole, yeah, changing the story and everything, the multiverse, it's nonsense. The gameplay's good. I like how they expanded on stuff, but that whole angle, 
No. I just got so I felt bombarded with tons of cutscenes and the slow walking while the characters banter and stuff. It was way too much for me. <laughs> you probably like the sequel then it's much more open. Okay. But anyway, that's good. Keep going. <laughs> Orthodox Monk says, Russia gave us some great games in recent years. The two Pathfinder CRPGs, the Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader CRPG, Black Book, and Atomic Heart. Thank you, Orthodox I still Monk. haven't played Atomic Heart. I bought it day one. I still haven't played it. Nissan says, two Vega guests. Oh no, it's Alex the YouTuber. Well, Alex <laughs> has been scheduled multiple times. We'll get him eventually. Yeah, Twice eventually. Now. We'll have, we'll have I'll Alex. I'll eventually now. get him. Um, Tony says, I walked out 45 minutes in of Godzilla Kong 2. Okay, finally, somebody who agrees with me. <laughs> and Dwight says, quick question for Blabs. What's the accent? Autism? No, retardation. <laughs> <laughs> Green came in with the, with the two over on Rumble, says, unrealistic beauty standards is how people like Anita got power in the first place. If people aren't shooting people up uh, from playing GTA, then, uh, then hot characters shouldn't make you a manosphere pig. Uh, thank you. 60 Watt says, seriously speaking, unrealistic beauty standards was the angle that got these woke charts into our games in the first place. Instagram and TikTok do way more damage on that front than games ever could. Yes, and those filters. Good Lord. Thank you, 60 Watt. Genuinely appreciate that. Uh, Methylus came in with a $5 direct donation. Says, F YouTube. Can't say anything with my F and super chats. Uh, I just wanted to say tits and it wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, you can. There you go, Methylus, on those direct donations. Thank you very much. Das Pooch says, noob tube, Craig. For real, you were one of those whiners. Look, if it had a gun that shoots grenades uh, that the creator saw fit to include, I'm going to damn well take it. Don't like it? It's a pity. I can I can't carry two. Try not to suck. No, listen, I use the new tube all the time. It was that was fair game back in the day in modern warfare for sure. And uh, Omni Stone Herald says two two quotes for y'all. There's nothing more useless than a silent majority. And the side that is uh, looking for a fight will always beat the side that just wants to be left alone. Left Cross says, Alyssa won't take interviews outside of people on her side. The path is going to land her a six-figure job entrenched in, in a company. You're probably right. <laughs> Bob Nation says, Craig, your opinions on games are as bad as Beardos. Blabs, Harry Potter, rotted your brain. Melanie, <laughs> you look like Lara had a baby with Quark. <laughs> and Timmy on stop. I respect your cease and desist presently. Thanks, Abomination. Cheers. <laughs> Appreciate Thank the rope. Uh, 60 Watt came back, says, this will become a monthly leaderboard where, it's talking about the uh, toxicity ranking, where the person with the highest toxicity rating will become the community hero and label the <laughs> toxic avenger. Oh, my dog. I'm just going to mute. That's okay. Uh, Bronze tonight came in and says, did you guys like Godzilla cross Kong? Uh, it was a great popcorn flick. The theater was packed and the audience was audibly responding and loved it. It was classic. It was a classic movie going experience. Uh oh. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, it's called taunting. It's an actual strategy. Speaking of the toxicity, Bronson Knight says, Melanie, low hanging fruit. That's offensive. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, and Wolf Colt came and says, Tom Nook didn't use my pronouns. Mods removed his soul. Thank you, Tom, uh, Wolf Colt. Dude says the, ES the SRB explicitly uh, states that online interactions are not rated by them. You can't rate hypotheticals. This is all true. All true. Uh, Henny just came in with the five. Says, uh, thanks to Endymion and Melanie for being themselves and not uh, and being effing OG to me. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thanks I never him. apologize for who I am. I don't care. So Good. Shouldn't. Uh, Ree says wall bouncers are human players that would mash the A button to, uh, to abuse the cover function. You go to, you go to a cancelable stick animation with a Nasher shotgun to kill you in PVP. I, yeah, I that's I why they got rid of them. Probably. They're I think awful. I missed that part of the conversation right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, we're talking about gears of war. Ah, uh, Tony came in and says, Mel, I, I was in LA the other day. No joke. Not only do I always feel such a negative energy there. I feel I, I felt a real demonic spirit throughout, I swear. I do not like LA, I'll tell you that. <laughs> An Orthodox monk is going to finish us off. Says, Craig, the new tuber blabs the 360 no scoper. <laughs> That's a good thing, Blab. That's a good thing. Oh, I'm actually good at sniping. I'm just saying. So. And Dylan came in with that, and I'm not going to read it. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for, uh, for popping in and being a part of our day. We have some memes to finish us up, don't we, Blabs? We do. Okay, here we go, guys. So this is my violence. 
People who don't oh. know stuff size scores, wham! That's right. You're going to get beaten up today. Right in the eye. This is Melanie. Stay away from him. Godzilla. Yes, my Godzilla. <laughs> um, this is Craig. One day the guest will pick the Gyllenhaal post-it note. One Gyllenhaal? Day. Jake Gyllenhaal? Gyllenhaal. I like to call him <laughs> Gyllenhaal. You know he's got a sister you can simp over, right? She does she have a Godbot six pack? I don't no, know. She doesn't. No. Her name's Maggie, though. This is I Mrs. Know Craig, my bubble boy. Hello. <laughs> Also, he is the man. He is the law. I am that law. I've got a shirt, so shout out. Let's go. Hey, check it out. By the way, you guys can pick up the brand new Side Scrollers All-Stars t-shirt available right now. There's less than 50 of them left. Go pick it up. Link is in the description. Uh, they'll be gone at the end of the month or until they're sold out. So go pick one up right now. The Side Scrollers All-Stars t-shirt. Link is in the description. Go pick them up right now. Yeah, so the next one is Animal Crossing for Adults. Violence meets Animal Crossing. Let's go. Uh, we also have Legend of of Gorbachev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gorbachev like out the there drop, dropping off uh, cliffs and stuff. All right, I need everybody to head over and check out Endymion's channel over on YouTube and uh, give him some big support over there so we can get a desk and a, and a PC. Uh, so you can <laughs> just lazy. I'm, I just, yeah. Go over there and hit the subscribe button. Endymion, thank you very much for popping in with us today, buddy. Genuinely yeah, it's all good. It's great. And of course... Melanie will be joining us one last time for a little bit on Friday, but you can find her today when she's going to be on the Quartering Podcast this afternoon. What time's that at? Uh, that'll be at 4.30 Central. Okay, so coming up here in just yeah. about three and a half hours. So uh, with that said, guys, thanks so much for your support today. Uh, you guys have been spectacular. You can go find Blabs over on Kick, where she oogles at all sorts of mid-ladies who take off their clothes. Are you still doing that on a day-to-day -day basis, Blabs? I haven't done that in like five months. Yeah, 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 but but really, I'm not talking about when you're streaming. Ew, no, I don't do that in my free time. Just be like, hmm. all right, would and, uh, would not would no no. Yeah, just going through them. Would love it. <laughs> all right, guys, appreciate you guys popping in. Thanks so much for being a part of our life. Hit the thumbs up button on the way out and share the show with your friends if you like common sense. You came to the right place. We'll see you guys later on. And remember, people try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.